the cheapest trash can Mac Pro on eBay. So here it is, the cheapest 2013 trash can Mac Pro on eBay. But is it any good? This is, well, it's the current generation Mac Pro, and not just the current generation, but even though this machine was made in February 2014, which is five years ago, for those of you who are following along at home, uh, you can buy this exact computer today, right now, for like too much money. So as a result of the fact that this is five years old, but also the newest model, these things are more expensive than they should be. And I, I keep pointing at this box. I'll promise I'll open it up soon. But basically, if you were to buy a 2012 Cheese Grater Mac Pro, which is the last of the Cheese Grater Mac Pros, those are probably a couple hundred dollars. But this Mac Pro right here was $1,300. Just let that sink in. The cheapest Mac Pro of this generation is $1,300 for a five-year-old machine. So the reason I'm a little confused about the specs of this guy are that I bought it from a bulk listing, not really, like a huge listing, there were five available. Um, and it said in the title of the listing, as you just saw, that it had the six core processor and the D300, which is the base graphics. But in the listing, they had a picture of like the about this Mac part and it had D500s. So I really don't know what it has. Hallmark premium gift wrap. This is a sleeve for wrapping paper. Oh God. Okay, so it's not even in a box, okay. Okie dokie, wait, does this have a keyboard and mouse with it or something? All right, well, let's, let's get this packaging out of the way and take a look. We have the Mac Pro itself, clearly, is in there. Looks like a generic charger, that's fine, doesn't matter, it's just a wall cord. Um, some sort of a mouse and keyboard. I did not expect this to come with a mouse and keyboard. Oh boy. Wow, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That right there is a mouse fit for a king. I'm not even gonna take that out of the wrapper. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, jeez. Well, you know what, props for trying. I was not expecting this to come with a keyboard or a mouse. Oh. oh no! Look at this! They've put a big yucky sticker on it. Ah, uh, that's gonna take a long time to get off. Oh man. All right, so I pulled it in for a tighter angle. This is just, oh wow, it just goes right off the top. You know, it's funny, because in all of Apple's sort of promotional stuff, they show this thing as being really dark black, but this is much more of a space gray, silvery color than, than you would expect. You know, whatever your thoughts on this particular machine, it's hard to deny that it's beautiful. I mean, this thing is a looker. Woo-wee. Okay, so I pulled in for a tight shot. You can see here, this is not an Apple SSD. We'll go further into detail on this, but one of the nice things about recent Mac OS updates are you can now use NVMe drives. So I got a larger Crucial SSD, it's 500 gigs that I've got stuff set up on. So we're gonna still take a look at what's on here, see how fast this drive is, but that's the situation. So if we spin it around here, you can see our dual banks of RAM, four DIMMs total, obviously. This particular machine has 32 gigabytes of RAM, which is very nice. Looks like all four of the slots are populated. So I was considering maybe bumping this up to 64, but I think we're probably gonna stick with 32 considering that both DIMMs are populated. Now, one of the other things that you'll notice when you look at this device, if I put it on an angle here, is the dual GPUs. Apple was kind of banking with this machine that dual graphics cards would be a bigger thing than they actually turned out to be. So there's not a whole lot that can take advantage of these dual graphics cards. So that's one of the reasons why this thing hasn't seen many updates is because this is a very specialized design. It's designed for dual GPUs. It's designed for the particular type of Xeons that it uses. And it doesn't really lend itself to a spec bump like almost all of Apple's other hardware does. All right, so let's go ahead and close this machine up. Lock it into place. 
Very, very nice. Say what you will, this is a gorgeous machine. I'm gonna take the stickers off eventually, but for right now, let's get this thing booted up and see what the specs are and see how fast that SSD is. Okay, so I've just booted into Mac OS, but I haven't looked at anything at all. Let's go to about this Mac. We do have the six core Xeon, 32 gigabytes of RAM, and a D300 graphics, in fact. Now, from what I've seen, there's not a whole lot of difference between the 300 and the 500, so I'm not too broken up about it. I'm more happy about the fact that this has the six core Xeon, because frankly, the four core is a waste of money. All right, so it's not the fastest drive. So the write speeds are a little bit worse than the normal SSDs that you would expect for these things, but the reads are a lot better. Normally you'd expect about 600 write, 700 read from an Apple SSD of this era. So I'm pretty happy with that, but the SSD that I have lined up is a lot better than this. So we're gonna go ahead and quit out of this, and I'm gonna go ahead and change to the better SSD where I have everything set up. So really quick before we do that, I just wanna give a huge shout out to Skillshare. They've been sponsoring a ton of videos on this channel over the past couple of months, and without their help, I would not be able to make a video on the cheapest $1,300 Mac Pro on eBay. So huge shout out to them. Skillshare is an online learning platform with classes to help you learn digital skills in a digital age all at your own pace. Skillshare offers access to hundreds of classes in a ton of different topics, so head on down to the description below and check out the link to get two free months of Skillshare Premium. And that'll be open to the first 500 people who use that link down below. Okay, now back to the video. Okie dokie, let's change that SSD. To me that looks like just a normal, like a TR8 screw. Oh, perfect. Intel SSD as suspected. As much as I miss the old drive bays, like you'd have four normal sized drive bays in the older Mac Pros, it is pretty easy to replace these SSDs. It's only one screw. And if you get these little adapters, you can pretty much use whatever NVMe drive you want. All you have to do is format it. So I got this one from Crucial. It's 500 gigabytes, and thanks to the recent fall in SSD prices, this little guy only sent me back $70. And it should be a lot faster than the default drives that these shipped with back in 2013, or even today for that matter. Okie dokie, let's boot her up. So let's just make sure everything's showing up go over to storage and we've got our 500 gigabyte drive. Now, let's go ahead and fire up the Blackmagic disk speed test. This is by no means the fastest SSD you can buy, but you can see this is a lot faster. The read speeds are pretty similar, but overall this is a faster drive. The write speeds are a, a decent amount faster. The reads are pretty similar. Let's go ahead and jump into some other benchmarks. So let's start with a Cinebench run. Let's see how we can do here with our six core 12 thread Intel Xeon. Okie dokie, so we got a score of 2091 CB. Now this is Cinebench R20, not R15, so that score might not mean a whole lot to you. So right now I'll put up on the screen some comparison scores so you can see where this thing falls. So I also ran the Geekbench for CPU and GPU compute tests. For the CPU, we got a multi-core score of just over 20,000. That's pretty solid. That's roughly in line with the top tier 2017 5K iMac with the Core i7-7700K. For the GPU, we got an OpenCL score of 70,000. That's roughly on par with an RX 560 desktop card. So not terrible, but nothing really too special. So that's a brief overview of the performance of this machine with synthetic benchmarks. Obviously there's a lot more testing that we're gonna do and I'll cover that in my full review. The other thing that I wanna do is actually edit this video on this thing in 4K and I'm gonna report back after I've done that to give you some final thoughts and tell you how it does for video editing based on a preliminary experience editing this video. Okay, so at this point I've edited up to here on the 2013 Mac Pro. And if there's one thing that's become very clear is that this thing can't 
quite handle a full 4K timeline. So actually a lot of the issues that I experienced are similar to what I had on my late 2015 5K iMac, which has very similar performance figures to this by the way, as well as my 2010 Mac Pro, which also had a six core Xeon, albeit an older one. So the problem was that when you have this 4K footage put in, just straight import it and put it in your timeline, it can't quite play it back in real time. It'll get through 10 to 15 seconds and then you start to lose frames and then it becomes really choppy and it just kind of slows down the workflow. Obviously, I've been spoiled as of late with my Core i9 iMac, but this is definitely below what I would expect for a $1,300 computer. And keep in mind, that's just what I paid. These things with this kind of spec will go for $1,500, $1,600 pretty regularly. Really not the best performance for the kind of money that you're gonna be putting into this. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is that this Mac Pro does not have an SD card reader is a little bit odd. So I had to break out my old USB 2 SD card reader. It's very slow. So just keep that in mind. If you are getting one of these things for video editing, you're gonna need probably a Thunderbolt 2 SD card adapter. That would probably be the better move, but it's definitely slower than having one built in. Now, the other thing you gotta keep in mind is that as beautiful as this thing is, and as much as it is sort of this Apple minimalist, really beautiful design, it's still a desktop. So right now I've got power, HDMI, ethernet, USB for the external drives, USB for the SD card reader, and audio line out for my speakers. That's six ports occupied right now. The minimalist setup is kind of a myth because once you really start plugging it into stuff, which you have to do, I don't think it's likely that you're gonna wanna use the internal speakers on this thing. There's still a lot of wires coming out of this thing. So that's, for example, the reason why I prefer using IMAX. It's a little bit of a cleaner setup and I really like a good clean setup. So that's sort of a first impressions video. I didn't dive too deep into the performance, value, and a lot of the quirks and features, if you will, of this machine. As usual, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, at Luke Miani, if you have any questions. And also, please consider joining my subreddit. And with that, I'll see you all in the next video.